I'm Liz Spencer and welcome to Business Connection, introducing you to the names and faces of Naperville area entrepreneurs and business owners. If you're just tuning in, you're watching Business Connection. I'm your host, Liz Spencer, and joining me now from Tandem HR is Grant Bramley. Grant, thanks for joining me. Now, tell me a little bit about your organization, and you are something known as a PEO. So what's that all about? Correct. Thanks for having me. So PEO stands for Professional Employer Organization. And what that means is we're effectively an HR outsourcing partner for small to mid-sized businesses. Um, when you have employees that are considered W-2 employees, which is a little unique in this marketplace with the rise of the gig economy, you have a lot of responsibilities around compliance, around process, around the things that you need to do in order to service, maintain, and ultimately develop those employees. But the administration of that can get pretty cumbersome. So what a PEO allows you to do is have a cost-effective way of outsourcing the administration associated with payroll, benefits, human resources, workers' compensation, and compliance-related areas. Excellent. It is an important part of a business. And as a, an, a, an employer in a not-for-profit space, um, it's not what I'm trained in. Mm -hmm. I just know I need it. Yeah, it's pretty different. And as um, as technology has advanced, you know, the area's gotten a little murky. Mm -hmm. And what differentiates a PEO from something like an HR technology is a model called co-employment. And so we're able to co-employ for the purpose of administration the the employees of our clients which gives us the ability to aggregate and bring economies of scale and also be a liability holder in the relationship there's lots of hr companies out there some mm -hmm. are smaller what what do you bring that's different how do you how do you use that scale a little bit more you touched on that a little bit with the co-employment but mm -hmm. i would also think that expertise yeah. and, and just availability of people to solve a lot of problems because it's never times well when you need an HR person. Yeah, absolutely. So the co-employment relationship allows us to bring all of our customers together from a volume perspective. And so that gives us the ability to have buying power uh, with the, ser the areas that we service. So specifically around insurance, around technology, we're going to national carriers and we're bringing obviously much more of, of an attractive demographic versus what typically small to mid-sized companies have difficulty getting access to. So what that translates to, just using benefits as an example, right. is a broader offering. And when it comes to being a small employer, a mid-sized employer, and the way that the industry sort of defines that is between, call it, 10 and 150 mm -hmm. to 200 employees. But as you're on the smaller end of that spectrum, you don't have as much independence in trying to compete with the larger companies because you're trying to offer things that are much more difficult to access. And so through a PEO, we're able to bring small companies a, a much broader benefits offering. We're, off, we're able to typically um, maybe bring some cost benefit because of that buying power. And we're able to deploy that in many ways through a technology that simplifies their life dramatically. That's awesome. I, I think that you, you hit on it that, you know, for a small company, especially in this global marketplace, in this tough marketplace right now, we're competing hard. And benefits is, is something that everybody's interested in. And we just don't have the buying power. Yep. How much say does the, or how much input does the employer have on something like that? Like if I have something, I'm in a different business, so I have different needs. No, it's a great question. We get it all the time. Um, in, in the co-employment relationship, the PEO doesn't have any authority within the business. It's for the purpose of administration. Okay. So the things that um, you know, small employment executives really get frustrated with are <laughs> local state federal reporting, compliance around documentation, administration of benefits, all of those areas that are, are required that they're never gonna be an expert in. And so as the PEO is the employment, is the liability holder and the co-employer for the purpose of administration, they can push all of that sort of transactional activity to us. They can rely on our human resources business partners to be an expert in their business, ultimately getting to know them as a company, educating them, being there for sensitive situations, but they still retain all of the authority around hiring, 
culture, training, development, everything that ultimately they need to be the decision maker on. Wow. So that, that gets, I'm sure, every small to medium sized business uh, listening in, it gets you thinking, mm -hmm. you know, how, how are you doing it? What do I need to know? How do you know when your business is, is needing a PEO or when you're, I, I guess, say ready for it? You have enough employees where it's, it's now becoming, you know, something that's taking up a lot of time. Yeah. Um, I don't, there, there isn't sort of a, a defined line in the sand. It's usually <laughs> some, some re relatively common inflection points. Mm -hmm. So you figure a business is growing based on customer demand, and so now they have to start hiring outside of friends and family. Mm -hmm. COVID yes. was a huge inflection point because of employee distribution. Businesses went from having a pocket of employees in one place to employees in multiple states. Yes. Or healthcare, which we've talked about a yes. need to try to compete with much larger organizations or competitors of those businesses in the same space. So there, you know, the most common time that we typically see uh, businesses moving to a PEO model is 15 to 20 employees. Mm -hmm. um, another example would be growth. You know, if a business for whatever reason has to go from 12 to 30 quickly, that's really complicated to do if you're not equipped with either the hiring mechanisms, uh, the recruiting mechanisms like attractive benefits or how you sort of reach those employees in different places. We bring all of that to a small company so that they can in some ways look, feel, and operate like any of their largest competitors. What sets you apart? There are other PEOs out there. There are, and there are good ones out there too. You know, I've had the pleasure of being in the industry for a while and working for some, some good companies on the other side of the fence. Um, where Tandem, I really think, makes a difference for our businesses is bringing um, the Midwest values and a really high customer-centric approach to, uh, to an industry that is marked by national competitors. Um, we hold the accreditations of some of the largest ones. We have a national footprint, but you don't get lost in the customer experience of working with some of the really big ones. We, our HR business partners, really work to get to know each and every client, understand their culture, help them be an advisor. And then obviously the, the technology that we deploy, which is best in class, ultimately just dramatically simplifies their ability to have efficiencies in their operations. That's awesome, yeah, because one of the things that you that a small business owner always worries about when you're going to a larger, a larger firm is, you know, will I be able to reach the person I need right now? And you know, will mm -hmm. I get that individual customer service and or will I just be on hold? So. Yeah. And in this market, one of the big distinctions, which is very is, is sort of sensitive to Illinois, is the fact that we do have a master health care policy through Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois, mm -hmm. which we're arguably the only one who can offer that as a PEO in our space. That's excellent. Now, um, I read someplace um, that if you partner with a PEO, your growth of, of your business will go, will increase seven to nine percent. Tell me, tell me a little bit about that. Why, what's the secret of growth with a PEO? I, I think I know the answer, but I want to see if I'm right. You're welcome to answer it if you want. But well, I'm I happy think, to. <laughs> well, I, I think, I think by taking that burden off the employer, I can concentrate on my job or what I really am, you know, my passion, my my skill level, without having to be overly burdened because I got you. That's exactly right. That's right. So it's it's workforce optimization yeah. because we're taking the things out that would normally have to either be researched, have to be discussed, potentially hired to, to deal with. And it's an on-demand resource while also being a liability holder. So you know, an example of part of our service offering is what's called employment practices liability insurance. And whether or not a company uses a PEO, I highly recommend that they do so. That's the insurance policy that protects the business from allegations by employees, which is obviously very prominent right now in the, in the national news. By having a PEO, because we're the co-liability holder, we are the front end of defense in those circumstances because it's our workflow, it's our technology, it's our HR guidance that ultimately protect the business and we're a shared liability holder. So we have vested interest in the positive outcome. It's not just read this article, do whatever you want, and good luck. It's we're there to help them, to, to defend them, but more so not so that it gets to defense, to protect them along the way so that they're able to navigate some of those troubling circumstances. So Grant, thanks for stopping by. That was a fascinating conversation. I learned so much. I'm sure my viewers learned so much. Thank you. To find out more about Tandem HR, please visit their website.
stay in the know, at home, or on the go with NCTV 17 News Update. This quick recap of everything happening in and around town will be delivered straight to your email inbox for free. Sign up today. We all have a story to share, stories others can relate to, whether moments of sorrow or of hope and inspiration, whether a story of struggle or a moment of victory. Every little moment captured and shared helps us to feel more informed, helps us to feel more engaged with and connected to the community we all call home. Every little moment captured and shared adds up to something greater. For us, that something is the collective story of Naperville, a city rich in its volunteer spirit, its diversity, its traditions and celebrations, and so much more. In Naperville, there are so many stories worth sharing. And for the past 35 years, it's been our honor to tell those stories and share them with you. Welcome to Business Connection. Joining me now from Belgio Catering is Tom Belgio. Welcome, Tom. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Let's let's go back a little bit for you and tell me a little bit what got you involved with food service. Uh, at an early age, I worked at Centennial Beach in downtown Naperville, and uh, we worked in the concession stands and uh, kind of learned how to do the food service and dealing with clients, customers that came to the beach, and and uh, really, I really kind of enjoyed you know that that concept of dealing with the upbeat pace of the uh, customers and the demand, and then uh, you know being able to work with friends and whatnot. So that's kind of how we got started back years ago. And how many years ago was that? Well, so Belgio's Catering's been around since uh, 2000, so we're on our 22nd year right now, just about approaching our 23rd year, and uh, we've seen a lot with the ups and downs of just about everything. So, and I, you know, I think people know the Belgio name and the Belgio Catering. You know, and you have grown over those 22 years. Tell me, what, how did it start out? You're now located up by the high school, but it wasn't, it didn't start there. Sure, um, you know, when we um, worked at Centennial Beach back in the day and then kind of progressed from there, um, after I graduated from high school, my brother and I bought a, a deli in Westmont. We had that for a few years. Um, you know, we were done working at three o'clock every day because, uh, you know, it was a deli, you were open for lunch. Um, you know, I was 18, he was 24. Wow. So, um, you know, we thought this was normal, you know, go home and throw the ball around kind of thing. Uh, and then reality set in, it was time to you know kind of take it to the next level um, so then we started doing things like rib fest taste chicago uh, things like that and got involved with uh, a partner with that um, and kind of progressed into where we are today you know 20 some years later right and you're running a very big operation you have a full uh, kitchen there and you have chef yeah we've got staff that work full-time uh, part-time we've got uh, a liquor license we do a lot of weddings a lot of rentals a lot of corporate events. Um, we've got a high school cafeteria that we operate uh, every day for a, a local school. Um, and then we kind of everything in between. Obviously with COVID the last few years kind of changed the business model a little bit, um, but we're kind of bouncing back and, and trying to find our, our new path um, to the new normal of uh, our business. Right, because you really had to pivot during that time period from yeah. no events to suddenly I could get a full meal from Belgio's. Yeah, delivery. I mean, you know, if you think about, you know, we went from, you know, uh, an event planning company and, and, and doing a lot of events to all of a sudden everything was shut down. So right away we had to switch gears and we started doing these meals of four mm -hmm. to help out the people that couldn't leave their homes, whether it was the elderly or just other type of issues where you were afraid to leave the house. Um, and that kept all of our employees going. We kept everybody that wanted to stay. And uh, it was a lot of work, but uh, it got us through you know through the process which was great so now both you and, and and Tim who's partnered with you and your sister Terry works there you all aren't the ones preparing the food you're the most Correct. people yeah. think that yeah. oftentimes the caterer is also the chef. That's yeah, um, I mean we can we can definitely help out. Uh, not nearly as fast as the staff. Um, mm -hmm. Our executive chef Raul, he's been with us since the beginning, so he's been with us 22 plus years. Um, and the rest of his staff, right behind him, probably 19 and less. Um, my sister Terry's been with us about 21 years, and then the rest of the staff kind of fills in from there. But uh, you know we can't be everywhere, so we count on our staff to represent us. And uh, we all we try to do is set them up for success, and we try to ask them to do things that we would do ourselves so it's not like we're asking them to do something we wouldn't do so and we treat them like family and that's I think the key and I think we hear that a lot from our customers um, you know the people who are, that come to the house or come to my office they're just so nice they really are polite and they really represent the brand well which is all I can ask for 
And tell me a little bit about the types of events you do. Um, you know, it goes from, you know, just your simple just drop off to someone's home to, you know, a, a, a wedding service at a, a church to a backyard wedding. Um, you know, prior to COVID, we were doing a lot of corporate stuff, which is starting to come back a little bit. Um, and then we do a lot of special events like a, a rib fest, a last fling. Um, and then locally, you know, we do a lot with North Central College from their athletic events to alumni stuff. Uh, board meetings, so a little bit of everything. Um, you know, we can do omelet stations, carving stations, pasta stations, uh, plated meals, buffets. Uh, we always joke, the only thing we don't really do is the family style, just because it's so expensive, and people don't realize that. But when you think about, you know, having 100 people, you need to bring food for 130, because you don't know what they're going to eat and how it's going to be distributed, you know, so. Well, I think when, and I know you do, you know, galas, and, and you've been very generous with NCTV 17, and you're, you know, a vice president of our board, so we, we thank you so much for that. But I'm always amazed by when we start talking to you about an event, how you know all the questions to answer. To ask that I would never think of, and how many, and how, how much food you never run out of food. Well, knock on wood, we, we don't. And people always say, you know, um, how do you plan for that? Yeah. Well, you know, we've been doing this long enough, right? Now, if you tell me there's going to be 150 and 190 show, that's a different situation. Um, but for the most part, I mean, you know, it, it comes back to it's, you know making sure our our staff can succeed. So as long as we have the tools, whether it be a refrigerated truck or the proper equipment for them to do the job that needs to be done, um, that's important. And uh, if you can plan for those kind of things, then it allows for any issues that do pop up you have a little flexibility right so that's 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 the key that's the key and, and I, I mentioned you know your role with NCTV and you give back to so many people in the community why is that important to you you know when we first opened you know we we said right away you know why don't we look and see how we can help out different causes so our thought and mindset was you know instead of spending money on actual advertising let's take that same money and give it back to the community now we didn't know it was going to grow as large as it did um, but we've also grown because of that over the years right so it's hard to put a pencil to you know dollar for dollar mm -hmm. it really is just cause for cause and uh, you know it, it's almost like having a third partner sometimes mm -hmm. you know um, <laughs> but uh, but we do we do enjoy what we do and and people appreciate that too mm -hmm. and they respect you for that and they see that you're up at four in the morning doing that 5k donation and then yeah. you're doing the plated meal you know maybe at the college that evening and yep. and and people are impressed by that mm -hmm. um, and like I said all and for us we're only as good as our last show right so we always right. have to be on our game um, so you have to try to just keep trying, you know. That's right. That's where yeah. food service and TV production, yeah. not that different. No, nope, not at all. I mean, we're both up early in the morning and yep. usually going through the, uh, through the night. So, That's right. You know. So when you look back at these 21 or 22 years, what surprises you most? Oh, um, you know, that's tough. I mean, because I mean, especially with the last couple of years, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, definitely um, uh, I've been impressed on how loyal people are to us. Right, mm -hmm. um, and I didn't, I guess I realized that in some capacities, but not really the full until COVID hit and how mm -hmm. many people were reaching out wanting to help. Um, well, and I think recognizing, you know, the Bell Show family has been part of Naperville for Long yeah, time. we moved here in 74 when I was born, so, uh, or 75, right around there. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, and, and my dad was in the limousine business for a number of years, so, you know, people knew him, and, and, uh, and then, obviously, the family, there's, I've got seven brothers and sisters, so, <laughs> you know, it's a big family, so. Tom, thank you so much for what you do for the community. We could not be the community we are today without the Belgio family, so thank you so much. To learn more about Belgio's catering, please visit their website. We all have a story to share, stories others can relate to, whether moments of sorrow or of hope and inspiration, whether a story of struggle or a moment of victory. Every little moment captured and shared helps us to feel more informed, helps us to feel more engaged with and connected to the community we all call home. Every little moment captured and shared adds up to something greater. For us, that something is the collective story of Naperville, a city rich in its volunteer spirit, its diversity, its traditions and celebrations, and so much more. In Naperville, there are so many stories worth sharing. And for the past 35 years, it's been our honor to tell those stories and share them with you. You're watching Business Connection, and joining me now from AAR is Greg Dellinger. Greg, welcome to the program. Super excited to be here, Liz. So tell me a little bit about AAR and what the corporation does. 
AAR, first off, stands for the Allen Aircraft and Radio Company. Our founder, yeah. Ira Allen Eichner, used his middle name for the first name of the company, and we started off trading aircraft headsets and microphones, the little lanyards in the early 50s, and here we are 67 years later, doing three things around aviation. We fix airplanes, we fly airplanes and helicopters in very austere and tough locations, and then we'll get you a whole airplane if you want it, one or two pieces at a time. So we're a supply chain of parts and components, both original equipment as well as um, from the aftermarket into the airlines. Um, and then we also have another business where we help mobilize mission. We manufacture aircraft pallets for the C-130 military aircraft, as well as shelters and containers. And that's all done in Cadillac, Michigan. So that's what we do. Fix them, fly them, get your whole airplane if you want it, one or two pieces at a time and help mobilize missions. Wow, that's amazing. So as you mentioned, you maintain, repair, and you, over, you overhaul crafts. Yes. Who does this work for you? Well, to make a repair or to maintain a commercial aircraft, you have to be a certificated aviation maintenance technician. And to obtain that certification, it takes on the low end 18 months to 24 months of education. Then once you become a certificated aviation maintenance technician, you then earn ratings, which are known as your A and P. So in the aircraft maintenance industry, the A and P is sort of the golden ticket. And A stands for the airframe, and P stands for the power plant or the motors. So the type of work is done by certificated individuals holding ratings, and that's one of the reasons why flying is so incredibly safe. That's amazing. Now, how does one become a, a maintenance technician? I would imagine that you need a lot of them, and in, in our current situation, you might be a little short. Yes. And so, and that was clearly um, uh, an issue prior to COVID. Um, skilled work done with one's hands using hand tools to make a repair, whether it's something that rolls on the ground or something that defies gravity like an aircraft, um, that was in demand pre-COVID. There's a very strong anti-manual work bias here in the United States. And I'm trying to march the agenda. It should, really should be the other way. So. Um, with that, um, you need some schooling. And here in um, the great state of Illinois, where um, transportation, distribution, and logistics really thrives because of our central location in the greatest country in the world, um, we have amazing opportunities to connect with education. So I have pipelines from City Colleges of Chicago, specific Olive Harvey College, where we teach uh, students how to work sheet metal, and then they are guaranteed interviews at either our Indianapolis location or our amazing brand new facility at the Chicago Rockford International Airport. I also have pipelines with a brand new aircraft maintenance school called AIM is the acronym, the Aviation Institute of Maintenance. It's the first one of the different AIM campuses across the United States that's actually in an urban area. So it's at the corner of 37th and Ashland in downtown Chicago in McKinley Park. And once again, that school just opened. So as those students uh, move through the program, they have an opportunity to, to then interview with AAR. And then on top of that, at the Chicago Rockford International Airport where our maintenance hangar is, and the Rockford Airport is the fastest growing airport in the world because of all the cargo demand that's going on right now. Right across the street from our hangar is Rock Valley College. Here in Illinois, there are 48 community colleges and RVC, Rock Valley College, offers the type of training. Once again, 18 to 24 months, guaranteed an interview with AAR, and those pipelines are really cooking. And what type of person has an aptitude towards this, or who's going to be attracted to this? What type of student are you looking for? Is it a STEM person, I would imagine, because yes. it's a lot of technology? Yes. Um, so yes, some STEM, uh, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Um, yet it's more about 
um, a desire to be moving around a hangar environment. Um, every day is gonna be a little bit different. And then to work on very sophisticated and complex machinery um, that um, needs to be maintained properly due to the criticality of constantly doing it right. So um, at AAR, we operate from a core, what we call our doing it right values, a wheel of values um, where uh, uh, Quality first and safety always um, is at the core of that. And so that type of criticality um, is um, also the type of individual we're looking for. And then outside of that, somebody who's really switched on and clicked on and tuned in to innovation, they're also going to thrive in this industry as well. Well, and with all the advancements in aviation, the type of machinery they're working on is very sophisticated. It is very sophisticated. So any young people that are out there, anybody who really loves like video games, this is the video game that you really want to work. So a lot of sophistication, um, and that's not going to change um, over the next um, you know, uh, 30 to 50 years or so, realizing an aircraft will fly properly maintained for 40 plus years. That's amazing. Are there any other... Um, opportunities outside of maintenance work? Yes, so um, AAR is um, headquartered um, right here in DuPage County. We're on the north end up near Wooddale. So we're on the northwest boundary of Chicago's O'Hare International Airport, still here in DuPage. And so at our world headquarters, uh, we have every job that would support a headquarters location. Everything from HR, to finance, to accounting, to our digital, our innovation group is there. So anybody who has those strong software skills, you're seeing a lot of digitalization coming into aircraft maintenance. Um, so any of those jobs as well. And of course, they're listed on AR Corp. We have a pretty robust career site, so ARCorp.com. Well, Greg, thanks for stopping by and sharing with us what AAR does and more importantly, what you're doing for our current aviation and our future. So super, thank you. Super. Thank you so much. It's great. Sky's the limit. Sky's the limit. If you're interested in learning more about AAR, please visit their website. If you're interested in a television appearance on Business Connection as a way to reach out to your community or to gain exposure for your company, visit nctv17.org. I'm Liz Spencer, and thank you for watching Business Connection.